I'm in Australia working with Nigel Williamson, who's been rescuing injured wildlife in and around the city of Melbourne for over 20 years. Although Nigel and I are based on opposite sides of the world, the challenges we both face on a daily basis are in fact very similar. I think one of the big problems that we have here in Melbourne is because it's growing so quick and we're building into all of these lands and we're developing it all, which is all native habitat to the wildlife, that every year I believe that we're getting more and more wildlife in the suburbs that need rescuing. They're getting themselves caught up in our homes and in situations that they shouldn't be getting themselves caught up, but it's only because we're, we're taking away all their natural habitat. You're actually getting wildlife trapped in pockets where all the surrounding areas become yep. urbanised yep. and then you've yep. got animals which can't even escape if they want to. Exactly, for sure. And how's people's perception of that? Do people mind that the wildlife's there or are they very anxious about it? It's a bit both ways. Some people love having the wildlife around them, other people can't stand it. Unlike England, a lot of wildlife here can be very dangerous. Earlier in the day, Nigel had received a call from an anxious resident who had spotted a giant lizard on their property. It's not the first report Nigel has had about the animal, and from experience, he knows that if he doesn't intervene, it's likely that someone will end up killing it. Yep, here he is, Simon. Well, that is massive. Isn't he? We've been searching for you for days, mate. All these reports have been coming in. And he's actually a what? A lace monitor. A lace monitor. That's about as big as they get. So what is he? He must be five or six feet, isn't he? At least. At least six foot, I'd estimate. And are they vicious? Extremely. They've got very nasty teeth on them, full of toxins, bacteria. You do not want to get bitten by them. Is that really, really dangerous? You'd end up in intensive care. They're the closest relative to the Komodo dragon. You know what the Komodo dragons are like? I've never come across one in the wild, thank heavens. We have these down south of Melbourne down through the Gippsland area. I've rescued three of them in my years. So it's not a very common rescue we deal with. So the chances of uh, you guys coming out and us finding one of these and having one of these is just amazing. Right. So does this sort of rescue scare you at all? Is, is it extremely dangerous? Do you want to feel my heart? I can't even feel mine at the moment, you stopped. <laughs> because the problem is their claws, they're so sharp, it's like five different anchors on each leg. So right. you've got to peel each one off the tree. Not easy at all to do. So you need loads of hands, really? You do. So are you going to come up there with me? No. OK. <laughs> You're on your own. <laughs> I have pulled a couple out of trees before, as I say, and uh, how I haven't been bitten, I don't know. I have been scratched by them. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be a bit of a challenge. I think if we get a ladder, we can put a ladder up. I'll put my harness and my rope and my gear on. That way I can climb up, tie off off the top. I can go up to him and we'll put you at the front end. Oh, great. Put you up near the teeth. Many of the animals Nigel has to rescue either live or escape high up into trees. So it's vital that he has the skills and equipment to deal with them. What I reckon we're going to need to do here is I'll go up the main trunk, tie my ropes off, hook myself up so I'm nice and safe and I'm going to be above him there. We'll get you to go up the ladder with the catch pole. You can lasso him around the neck. Should right. be pretty easy to do. He's not moving very much. So he's sunning himself at the moment, so he's in a very relaxed mode. Right. Um, and uh, then I'll be able to stand on the little branch just underneath him and start pulling those claws off. And we'll start probably trying to get his head off. Um, and then I'll be able to grab his tail and grab his back legs. But that's what's going to happen in theory. What's yeah. actually going to happen is a totally different kettle of fish altogether. You start Who off knows? with plan A and then you go to plan Z by the time you finish. That's it. Three things you have to watch out for. One, don't let them bite you. All right. Okay, I don't want to see you in, up in hospital. Two, are the claws. They're not going to cause you too many problems apart from ripping your skin open, which I'm sure you're used to. Yep. Uh, but it's that tail. Okay. Right, their defensive mechanism is to get that tail and slap you across the face with it. Okay. Or across your body. Okay, it will cut your skin. If he jumps and I'm up the tree and I'm still hooked up and tied up, you're in control. Great. Okay, so what you do is you just pounce and jump on top of him. Now you can probably feel me through the tree, the vibration.
Well, it's good to see he hasn't moved. I'm very glad about that. OK, well, that's me all tied up. So if you want to get your catch pole and start getting ready... Right. Just wait until I get a couple more feet up here and get myself balanced. He's trying to go out now. He's going to come down in a minute if you're not careful, Major. Oh, that was going to make it a little bit more interesting. I don't think I need to be up the tree now. See that tail? He's got it ready to whip, to whip. me. Yeah. He's got it all bent round. And he can judge the distance. As soon as I get within range, He'll, uh, he'll flick it around and try to get us. Now, he's starting to, to hiss at me, which is a defensive mechanism. Bring his I'm going to be better if I'm on the ground now, I think. OK. OK. Now, if you can start to get that pole in there around his head... I'll wait until you've got his... got his head. I need, shall I go around the other yeah, side? Around or the, oh, hang on, I'm going to go for the grab. OK, I've got his tail. You got his head? Beautiful. OK. That's it. Move along, mate. Move along. I tell you what, he's a healthy boy. He's a big chap. He's a, the amount of meat that he's got in that tail there, that tells me that he's extremely healthy. He's been feeding really well. And I've got to get over onto your side now. I'll tell you what, this has gone really well. We've got him in a perfect spot. Now, see how he's got his claw on the pole? Right. That's five anchors off already. Sure. So we're a fourth of the way there. He's not going to be able to get his back legs up to the top there again. If we can get them onto the pole, get the pole underneath him, yeah, turn it around so he can grab hold. He'll feel more comfortable. I'm going to go for the neck. Gotcha. OK. You can... OK, beautiful. He's, oh, he's down. Got him. Look at that. That tail's so strong. You got it? You got the tail? Yeah, I've got beautiful. it. Beautiful. We'll get him out in the open out of all this bracken. OK. And we'll release the pole off his neck. OK, I've got I've sort of got him. You got the tail? I've got the tail. Watch your rope, Ted. <laughs> OK, well, you, can release, you release the pole. OK, beautiful. All right, I've got the tail again. OK. Ooh, OK. Look at that. That okay. is massive. He's, uh, he's cut his, uh, a tooth there when he's gone and bitten the pole. Right. Um, is when he's done that. But look at that mouth. That is pretty scary. You can see the little teeth in there. Yeah. They look really vicious. But it's all that saliva and all the toxins, the yeah. bacteria. Because they're a, a scavenger, but they eat all these dead, rotting animals. But he's in excellent condition. I just can't believe the thickness of that tail. That would have to be the, the thickest tail that I've seen on one of these guys. You can see why they're very good climbers. I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of that slash, I'll tell you. Now, we've had about four reports for this guy right. over the last week now. And it's just been great to be able to now get him before he's got himself into too much trouble. OK, Simon, I'm going to get you to hold on to him while I go back to the car and go and get a bag for him. You've got to grab hold of that tail. Right. And then one hand up on the neck, as I've been doing here. OK. okay. Right. Go up there. Up there. Yep. You got it? I'm good. OK. Heart's oh, beating. Now, right. would you like just to pick him up and put him in? I'm going back to England. <laughs> oh, look at that mouth go. How's that strength? It's incredible. He's trying to bite the bag at the moment. Yep. And he won't let go of the ground. Just don't let him bite me. OK. Let go of the neck now or not? Uh, get the front leg in. Get the other leg in and he'll probably crawl in. Let, let the head go. Move the hand back. Look at that. Straight in. That's what you want. Well done. The biggest lizard you've ever handled. And will probably be always the biggest lizard I've ever handled. <laughs> For Nigel, relocating this lace monitor out of the suburbs is just one small victory in his daily struggle.